Global watchdog Amnesty International has demanded that promoters of violence in the Edo State's governorship election be probed and punished. In a statement, the advocacy body called on the federal government to quickly nip the violence conduct of a certain political element in the state and ensure the poll is conducted in a conducive atmosphere. Country director in Nigeria, Osai Ojigo, says the potential turmoil being stirred up by various factions ahead of the gubernatorial elections in Edo State should send a clear signal to Nigerian authorities of the imminent violence ahead of the polls and government must take active steps to prevent a bloody poll. The group also enjoins the authorities to ensure that journalists, international and national civil society groups and agencies that will monitor the elections are able to do so in a safe atmosphere. And joining us live is Osao Duo, Country Director, Amnesty International Nigeria. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Now, for a very long time, Amnesty International has been known for uh, credible information. So what necessitated this warning uh, uh, at this time concerning the polls in Edo State? Uh, thank you very much. We've been receiving quite worrying um, reports of breakout of violence, as well as attacks and intimidations. And one thing about monitoring these sort of situations is that it can serve as an early warning. So it can give you an idea of trends to watch out for so that the authorities can prevent the violence from escalating and actually leading to loss of lives, properties, and damaging the reputation and the integrity of the electoral process. So from what we are seeing and from what we've been able to check based on um, our findings, it's important that all authorities, both federal and state authorities, take steps to prevent violence from escalating. And that for the cases of violence that have been reported, that they actually investigate this thoroughly and that they prosecute uh, perpetrators of this violence. Because without prosecuting them, you send a message also that it's okay, it's allowed, it's permissible for you to exhibit such violence in this space. So this is really a cry for help and a cry also for restraint for the political actors in this um, upcoming polls to take caution and to caution their supporters and to ensure that everyone can participate safely without any risk and without any dangers to themselves. Mm. We've struggled as a nation with uh, credible and hate-free elections. So what would you recommend as a body? I think the first thing is um, sensitization. And I think a lot has not gone into, there's of course a lot of campaigning around these issues about voting, who to vote for. But I think there needs to be a lot of sensitization about the harm of violence and what the implications are. Long after the elections, you find that families are still reeling over the effects of violent attacks. Um, if you were to ask anyone whose family member lost their lives in the general elections, they'll tell you that the whole world seems to have moved on, but they are still struggling with the effects of that. And even sadly, the people that facilitated and led to the deaths of their loved ones are nowhere to be found. They've not been arrested, they've not been prosecuted. So it seems that justice is still not served. Um, another issue is about the implications of this violence. If government is coming out strongly to say, if you um, instigate violence, if you participate in violence, then these are the consequences and that the law enforcement agents have the powers to investigate and that we will be watching and monitoring and ensuring that you do not escape for perpetrating this violence. It would no longer be fashionable for violence to be a part of um, electioneering period or even any period at all in Nigeria. We are beginning to see a lot of tolerance for this kind of violence and we should never have a situation where people who have access to arms or are strong physically are able to manipulate that in order to intimidate others. Everyone should be able to live freely and safely and to also be able to voice their opinions safely without fear or intimidation. Mm. 
And uh, should we be expecting that uh, Amnesty International uh, will take up a supervisory role during these elections or even in the future? So Amnesty International as a human rights organization does not do election monitoring, but you and I both know that human rights never goes to sleep. So we would constantly be on the lookout to ensure that everyone is respecting the law and as well that human rights violations, whenever they occur, we bring it to the attention of the authorities, but we will not be directly monitoring as election uh, observers. But we do know that civil society organizations and international bodies would be closely monitoring the elections as election observers. Hmm. Now, when you compare the elections in Nigeria and those we see internationally, what's the striking difference and how can we get to the points that we practice such that it tallies with international best practices? Um, I think one step is to create enough awareness People never seem to know what to expect from the electoral process until it is closer to time. And so there's already anxiety. There's already a lot of misinformation out there in the public. We need to do better at ensuring that people know from the onset what the electoral process would look like so that you can combat misinformation and fake news. So that when people come up and say, oh, we understand that this is not happening, you'll be able to say categorically, no, go to INEX website, go to the government's website. Um, no, this is the information that is there. There's, the, the authorities are combating a lot with um, misinformation and they can do a lot by being proactive with information sharing long before the election so that people can be better informed. The second issue is around security. When you look at the turnout of people that come out for elections, one of the things that comes operates in their mind is, will I be safe? Will I be able to cast my ballot without fear? Will, will there be avenue to ensure that uh, when I leave the space, nobody's going to follow me and nobody's going to harass me? So that lack of confidence in the security apparatus that has been provided is lacking. In other climates, you see that everyone knows that you can go into a venue, you have a secure way in which you can cast your vote and then you leave and that everyone is monitoring the process and that even the government itself that is interested in the results is also ensuring that security is rife. In a situation where you feel that certain areas or certain communities do not have any security presence, the likelihood is that it can discourage people from coming out to exercise their right to vote. Another area is also in the violence that ensues. We've seen in other countries, whenever there's violence, you would see there's CCTV cameras, they have taken videos, reports from the media, there's investigation. You would hear that these cases, they've identified people who are involved in looting, who are involved in breaking into places and that they are prosecuted and they've gotten certain terms of imprisonment or fines. In Nigeria, we very rarely hear that anyone has been held accountable for any electoral offense or for any uh, violence that has been perpetrated as a result of that. So these are things that needs to change in order to increase confidence in uh, people and also to secure the safety and most importantly, promote the integrity of the process that everyone has a fair chance in this process. And now your message is out there that there might be violence in these elections and that the government must prosecute uh, offenders. So are you hopeful that this message will be taken seriously by politicians ahead of the polls? I am hopeful that they would take this message seriously because of one fact. Unlike the general elections where there were several states that were going through gubernatorial elections, we now have a situation whereby the focus is on one or two states. So there's really no excuse for the authorities, whether at federal or state level, to say that they are overwhelmed by what needs to happen. It's a lot easier for people to watch. It's a lot easier for people to monitor. And even the election monitors themselves would be able to harness their resources to focus on what is going on. So it's really up to the government to ensure that what they have signed up to, which is to keep everyone safe, that they are able to live up to it. The whole world is watching. And if you can allow a situation to degenerate in one state, it means that 
clearly that you are not um, doing all that is possible in order to rectify it, because this is just one state. And then, of course, we know Undo is also going to happen. Unlike when they had to look over 29 different states during the general elections. Thank you very much, uh, Osai, Country Director for Amnesty International Nigeria, for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me.